do not talk about your narcissistic parent, the other co-parent, in a negative way. Don't make them choose sides. How do narcissists treat their children and how do we protect our children? So all people are not, it's called part objects in object relations theory. All, all people, uh, narcissistic people or personality traits, <coughs> treat people as if they're more like objects, more like resources or assets than they do people. And the same goes for kill children. They treat the children the same. What I see a lot of narcissistic people do is they end up um, creating kind of very just rigid roles in their family. They'll have one that's the smart kid or another one who is the talented kid. There maybe there's another one who's sort of the, the clown. You'll see them sort of breaking kids into the role. There's often the parentified child, the, the kid who does a lot and kind of keeps things running around the house. Then you have a child who may be the lost child. This is usually someone who tends to disappear. There's often the golden kid. This is the kid who cannot do anything wrong. They somehow reflect well on the narcissist. So as a result, they're always talked up. There's usually you're going to find the scapegoat. Scapegoat usually is either because they are seen as the problematic person or the one that brings on embarrassment to the family, or they are the one that tells the truth. Uh, telling the truth will get you scapegoated too. So they tend to sort of see people more in one or two, their children as one or two dimensional instead of fully. And they also then don't really get to know their kids in a real way, authentic way that encourages uh, mature discussions and helpful advice. It's more, it's more sound like sound bites. And unfortunately, usually when there's a divorce, especially if it's with men, they often disappear from these children's lives. They'll, they'll, they'll concoct some excuse like my ex-wife makes it really hard or, you know, the courts worked against me. But the really, the truth of the matter is, is that, that, that with anybody, they're out of sight, they're out of mind, unfortunately. Lindsay Gibson in her book, uh, the last one I showed you, the uh, adult children of emotionally immature parents, she actually looked intensively at uh, those raised by narcissistic parents. And she found that they tend to be very good at pleasing people, very sh show up for people. They tend to be high achievers, but the problem is that, that they're not very good at taking care of themselves and setting good boundaries. They're having a very hard time with that because boundaries weren't allowed in their home. So it becomes very hard to hold boundaries with other people. Uh, as a result of that. Having a narcissistic abusive mother does a particular, particularly toxic things to, to particularly their daughters because mothers often see us as a projection of themselves. So if they have a lot of self-hatred, then you're going to experience a lot of, of, of rejection and loathing and um, um, that. You're going to just feel that put out on you. It's not actually from you. You're also not going to be seen as yourself. You're going to be seen through her lens of, of you. So for example, my, my mom was uh, struggled with being uh, overweight. And so even though I was normal weight, she started me in dieting uh, when I was 10, 10 and 12. I don't know if you guys saw the video I just posted today about my vulnerable journey, trying to work my way out of that to reclaiming my health in a different way, in a healthier way. But yeah, we often end up being sort of a, a, a screen, a projection of our parents, unfortunately. And when you're a girl and it's your mother, it's very, very hard. She's really worried that her daughter may be close to her husband and that he might then work on that relationship and keep the daughter away from her if there's a breakup. Yeah, that is a real concern. That happens more than we wish it would happen in which um, narcissistic parents turn the other parent turn the children against the other parent. What you can hope for is through time, because this person is going to be true to themselves, they're going to be narcissistic, they will be abusive to these their children as well. And that down the road, the children sort of have this epiphany, this wake up moment when they realize something's very, very wrong and they work then to get better and they realize that that's not who you are and that you've been there and been available the whole time. So what I'm saying is keep the faith stay involved, do what you can, and hope that just with time things get clearer. So how do we help kids who are dealing with this? I would really recommend that you develop a kind of relationship where you can talk about tough stuff. You create space for that, where you say to them, how was your day? And when they say, not good, you can say, oh, really, I'm hard. I had not good days. And then to jump in and say, when my not good day happened, this is what it was like. What's your not day good day like? And then you listen, you create space for them to share. Well, so-and-so called me a name on the playground. Oh man, I hate it when it happens. 
You know, I had that happen a lot. So how, how, what are you doing about it? How's it, how's it going around that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do. You know, I didn't know what to do either. And I'm really glad that you're talking to me. You know, over time, I found that if I did these things, it really helped. That's what it looks like. It looks like that, where you, you invite them, you hear what they say, even though it's little, you use the little to expand based upon your own experience. You check back with them, see how it feels to them. Then you expand more. But there are some rules to this. I'm going to give you some rules. Do not talk about your narcissistic parent, the other co-parent, in a negative way. Don't make them choose sides. Children have this innate ability, this innate need to always keep everybody in their world in their world. If they feel you're going to make them choose sides, they're going to choose the more fragile parent. And guess what? That's not you. They're going to choose that toxic person because they can feel that relationship is very risky, very, very fragile, and they'll choose it. So don't make them choose. 